All right, welcome everyone. For those that are online, you're here, but we actually have live participants, which is really great because normally I'm just talking into a screen constantly and I actually don't know if you're listening, which is highly possible, it's not. Um, okay, so today uh, we're continuing on with our theme with match balance, but we're focusing on challenges that endanger the safety of an opponent. So obviously this was a big highlight from last year. Um, in which we will see in a recap. And we're written to round six, and I'm really worried that someone's going to get seriously hurt if we don't become stronger on these challenges because we're failing to identify how players are going um, because we're focusing on things that are, allow us to downgrade it, and that's just not on. The game expects more from us. And we have to, and that's our role. Our role is to protect the players and the image of the game. Awesome stuff. All right, so acknowledgement of country, of course. So Football Queensland acknowledges the traditional owners of the land, which we play, referee, coach, administer, and watch football, and recognising their continuing con connection to the land and the community. We pay respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander cultures and to the elders past, present, and emerging. All right, not that you guys online can see, but Chris is just behind uh, the computer. So <laughs> the uh, Academy Head of Football and also the NPL coach of uh, the Brisbane Royal Youth. So Chris and I have had multiple discussions in regards to certain um, situations in a match, which is great because it opens up the communication um, and it makes, A, it makes us human and it makes us accountable for the game. So Chris is here to help us give a perspective of a player's point of view, being a match player himself, um, but also a coach and why it's important that we get these decisions right. So a big welcome to you, Chris. Thank you for taking the time and joining us. Um, we're kind of where the, the weird and wonderful uh, part of football. So <laughs> a big welcome to you. All right. So. I have a really ambitious agenda, and when we look at our um, survey clips that we've done, we'll probably just throw them out the window because I don't think we're going to get to them tonight, the amount that we need to cover. And we've got some weird and wonderful general business maybe to throw in at the end. I really stress when you ask us comments to look at the law book first <laughs> because you'll probably find that the majority of the answers, 98% of them, actually lie within it. And if you don't have it, you can go to IFAB, there's a website, there's an app, there's a lot of material out there that may be able to assist you before you come to us. But we're happy to help you navigate a law book. So our aim actually, actually is quite simple. We need to be able to differentiate between challenges committed in a reckless manner Versus serious foul play, versus violent conduct, and we have to know how to sanction and report accordingly. Okay. Now this is actually in the law book, but does anyone actually know where in the law book it lies? <laughs> <laughs> no? Is it not five? No. Yeah. It's in the introduction. <laughs> it is. It is. So what's really, I guess, important is A, we have to create a safe environment and deal strongly with those who play too aggressive and dangerous. Do you think we do that? Obviously not, because we're here talking about it tonight. But we're not alone. If, if you watch the EPL, UEFA and that type of thing, they also don't get it right, even with VAR. So, you know, we've got more of a chance of getting it right because we don't have that intervention of VAR, which is, which is a good thing for our bank. Okay, so again, we've got reckless challenge, endangering the safety of an opponent, or using excessive force. And do you 
Do you understand why these two are separate? Because you can manage the session and find out without meeting the before. So when we talk about law, when the, when we talk about law and when FIFA, when we talk about managing a game and managing the expectations, when FIFA wants you to downgrade a level, normally what type of fouls are we talking about? No. no. Downgrading. Uh, tactical fouls. And why, what not, how tactical fouls normally committed? What, with careless. So when we're talking about managing a game and managing the expectations, it's normally due to tactical fouls, like dog so in the penalty area. It's a footballing challenge, gets downgraded because normally that's committed in a careless manner, unless it's a non-footballing challenge. And that's a different story. So have we ever read in the law book about downgrading clear reckless, excessive force, violent conduct, brutality? No. But when I talk to a lot of referees, I get a lot of reasons the game didn't need it. Well, that player not, may not be able to walk for three weeks. Or you allow that player to do it this week, Next week, he does the same as well, that referee let me off. And someone ends up with a career ending tackle because we allowed it that week. We didn't protect the players, we didn't protect the game. So now we have to make sure that we do our job accordingly. So when, we're, when I'm talking to you about a reckless, I don't want to hear the excuse of, Oh, the game didn't need a second yellow card because you don't know what, what you're allowing for future or what problems you're causing for your peer the next week that won't tolerate. All right, so that's where it is in the laws of the game introduction. Okay. So to find out why we're here, we're going to have a look at the common trends of last. So this, and so this is not my highlights package. It kind of is, but different. to break now, that's a very strong challenge, a Sam Roper, and there's all sorts of Protect the 
Intercepted, although Winston Wilson does really well to come away with it. And he's left a foot in there on Torresi. That's not a good challenge, very ugly. The referee coming across, have to hold on now. Very, very stupid. challenge is committed is still the same. So, of course, it's lunge with one leg, two legs. It doesn't really matter. And referees, and it really, guys, it really, really shits me when I get the situations in the penalty area, when I get these big decisions, and I look at it and I'm like, well, that's a penalty. 
because your camera is zooming in on you, especially if you've got ambitions to go high level, making these big gestures. I watched Germany versus Nigeria in the Women's World Cup. And the German girl has just been absolutely nailed by the Nigerian. And she was nowhere near the ball. And the referee's doing this. That referee never refereed another game. That was her last match. So if you, you can say no to players without having to make it so visual to everyone else. So just be mindful of your mannerisms and you want to bet your house on, if you're going no, that it's a no. Because if they're feeling no, will the camera pick, on, pick up on that? Probably not. Players are confused. So just be mindful that if you're going to make big grand gestures at a referee, you're right. And again, our job is to protect the safety of players from serious injury. So we should all know what the definition of serious foul play is. But lunging, do we identify it? Do we, in 2020, did we identify it? No. But watching it, it looks pretty clear. There are a lot of cues players tell you when they're about to go into a challenge that, oh boy, we're in a lot of trouble here but we kind of react after the fact. But we only focus on the point of contact, which we'll discuss a bit later on. So what's our role? When we go out there to referee, what's our role? Protect yourself. Protect yourself, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's a good way to protect yourself? <laughs> Get your decisions right. Be consistent. Yeah. Facilitate and entertain the match. Yeah. Player safety. Player safety. Yeah. yeah. So we can definitely facilitate an entertaining match and make it good, but make it fair and make it a safe environment so everyone understands. If someone leaves the ground. And they connect, what colour are we seeing? Got the same colour of these balls that are on the uh, on the table, it's red. Okay. <laughs> 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 I see a red ball here and a red ball there. All right, so we're about to go into our first group exercise. And for those on the Zoom call, um, you'll go shortly into the breakout room exercise. So this is the first Word document that we're going to do, and which we'll go through shortly. Okay. So I want to, so I can coach you better. I need to understand what, or how do you interpret serious foul play? So what are the visual cues? When you're refereeing, what's going to tell you that this challenge could potentially be endangering the safety of an opponent. And I guess, and I also want to know on the flip side, what prevents you or what makes you downgrade to a reckless challenge. So we're going to spend roughly about 10 minutes discussing those. So for those here, um, someone's got USB, they've got the word doc up. Um, online, if one person can share the word document and then email that to us once the uh, coaching session's finished, uh, that would be great. Yep. Okay, perfect. So I think everyone's right. All right. So hopefully that we've turned around the screen. Um, we apologise for those that are online. It's really hard when I'm not looking at anyone but a computer screen or ignoring my, my audience here, but this is a bit of a trial and error. So exercise one was actually just all about discussion because if you don't understand what the cues are yourself or um, you can't articulate it, it means that your report writing is going to be poor. So it's really important that A, you are lawful in your knowledge and you know how to convey it, especially to an assessor, or a matchday coach or a mentor, 
So it's really important that we have these discussions, A, to increase your understanding and being able to translate that into report or conversing with your peers, especially when giving feedback on the field. All right, so Mark said that group three online was, was probably the widest group that he came across. So who is the person speaking on behalf of group three in the breakout room? No one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would say, I would say, hello, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> hello, hello, we go. Okay. Uh, uh, we have <laughs> Um, um, uh, we had a couple speed. We had a couple mention. Um, what did you say, Jackson? <laughs> uh, we had a, someone mentioned brutality over here um, was a key factor for them. Um, yep. Yeah, uh, we had uh, lunging and jumping was a big one that was mentioned as well. Um, yeah, I think that was us. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll not go into the group here. So, Lara, what did you have? I'm going to pick on you because you showed me your homework. I thought if I showed it, I didn't have to say it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we talked about so similar to Luca, uh, speed. We also talk about point of contact, uh, whether there's a late or a heavy touch, that's a signifying sign that there's probably going to be a lunge coming. Uh, lunging from distance, leaving the ground with either one or two feet. And then the next part is about looking at intensity. So the intensity can be signified by how the straightness of the leg, the pointed of the elbow, which will then give the intensity behind the force behind the challenge. Right. Did you guys all hear that online? Yes, no. Give us a way to you guys. Mark, you said group two online? Okay, so group two online, do you have anything to add that hasn't been raised? I was group leader nominated again that time. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a, there's a few. You can say no, Brad. <laughs> oh, okay. No, no, there wasn't anything. <laughs> no. no, I meant to be a group leader. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a group leader. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so, uh, we sort of, there was one on there, uh, that we we're talking about was, um, players that were sort of accepting and walking away from the situation. Um, as a cue. Um, and then uh, we also had one, like a reaction and a retaliation um, to the situation. Yeah. I mean, I'll give an example. Pez had a game in which a player got kicked in the head that needed facial reconstruction and no one said boo about it. So I, I'd be mindful of, of taking in players' reactions because sometimes um, they might be a little bit far or don't hear of it. So, so yeah, so just be wary with that point. Hey, Pez. <laughs> when he endangers his own safety. Well, yes, yeah, he did put his <laughs> head down to head a ball that was above waist height, but uh, about waist height. All right, is there, I guess anyone else here that's got anything to add to the group? <laughs> okay, so Pez said whether it's upper body or lower body, so in what way? Well, leg, the leg channel as opposed to like his upper arm challenge, mm -hmm. using the arms to jump. Yeah. So that position, top of the 
goals. Yeah. So I guess it's how someone will jump into a challenge. It's really important to um, to take in all the information because you may be looking low body, but the connection is high, or you're looking at the way that they're going up, but the connection is low. Uh, Michael. We're trying to pop up. Um, well, the first one I thought was body challenges or she played challenges at a ball. They're not playing at a ball, they're saying CSL play or something like that. But they're not challenging for the ball they were talking about while I was under. I'm so sorry. Yeah. I'm talking for eight, I guess. Yeah. For ball. That's, yeah. that's my first thought. Yeah. Was it was a challenge for the ball? Was it challenging for the So the difference between serious foul play and violent conduct. Okay. So now. It's really important of how do we interpret serious foul play, which is SFP. If you look at any of my huddle clip, uh, clips and you see S SFP, it only has RC after it. So again, we're talking about speed can be an important factor sometimes, depending on the situation. Intensity. Uh, fridge draw. Otherwise, the pizza cheese is in the freezer. Okay. <laughs> Good to know. Good to know. All right. <laughs> Just mute yourself um, during that uh, while I'm presenting. Okay. Again, I think as Lara mentioned, traveling from distance, but not always. Again, a player leaves the ground, they cannot control their speed or intensity. So this is high. This is alarm bells ringing because if they make contact with that player, it's an easy decision. Trust me, guys, it's an easy decision. But for me, my recovery is always my back pocket. Some people, it's their top pocket. It's not that hard to get out. Trust me. Again, lunges at an opponent behind, from the side, from the front. It doesn't matter. It's a lunge. Again, studs showing. How many times have we seen clips, especially on the huddle, with players leading in with their studs? A lot. And we don't do anything about it. Probably because they win the ball. Oh, he won the ball. Got lucky that time. Again, or a challenge that clearly endangers the safety of an opponent. Again, if it's from close, it's not going to have speed or intensity because it's coming from further distance. All right. Chris, I'm going to put you under. <laughs> do you have anything, I guess, to add so far? No, it's all been. It's all been uh, pretty eye-opening so far, but it's, um, I think week to week, I think knowing who you're playing is and the detail of games gets a lot, uh, a lot higher, like speaking to the players for a bit, knowing players for a while, the detail that he goes into from what I've seen so far uh, is massive. And I know not everyone's full time, like I'm lucky to be full time boys, so, if you see clips and Jackie sends you clips, I'm sorry, but I'm very bored on Monday morning. So uh, I'll send you through plenty, but um, this is as much a learning experience for me as it is as it is for you guys as well. So I'm not here to, to drop heaps of shit on you because I think you do a fantastic job. Um, but there are things which I think obviously help educate and I'm here tonight as a help education thing as well from a coach's point of view, not a drop shit on their breeze because mm -hmm. you're as important to our game as everything else. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm interested on the, uh, on the trees and there's probably a couple of things that we'll talk about later and a couple of tackles which interpretation is, as Jackie said, is is so important, but so important to get right. And if one of my players were part of that um, and on the wrong end of it, you got no issue from me. So. All right, so breakout room exercises. Um, I so some people got a little bit excited with clips. I'm like, oh my god, I've got clips. I can watch them. It's really exciting. But I'm glad that you know we can follow directions. So some have already warmed up in exercise one with the clips, but exercise two. So for those in the breakout room, um, you were sent an email that had the word document um, and also the clips. So if you're in an odd um, room, you look at group one. And I'll work out with these guys here what's going to happen because they need a little bit more um, direction. <laughs> and 
with uh, group two, that's even numbers. So hopefully, uh, if Mark is listening, um, <laughs> someone can share their screen in the breakout room. Obviously, Brad probably will get dumped with it again, or maybe he can actually uh, step up to the plate and give someone else that role. But if not, if not, someone share the screen and someone else write down the notes. So this one, we're going to probably spend 20 minutes um, to discuss. There's four clips. Yeah, so roughly about four to five minutes per clip. So again, I really want you to analyze the player's movement. This is going to be key. If you can watch it and analyze it um, while watching football, it should translate onto the field. Again, what cues can you use for your own processes and identification? And this is really important because when we read your reports, and we read a lot of reports, it needs to be clear and we need to improve in this area. So if it's a direct free kick, red card, blue 11, 11 one to that red five using excessive force while challenging for the ball. And that's all it means, and it comes under serious foul play. All right, so it's very clear, tells you exactly what it is. You can go into more detail about avoided contact and all that sort of stuff. But when I write my FIFA referee reports, that's all that's required. Yes, you know, as you said, a lot of them came from last week or even as recent as last night in which Mark and I were scrambling um, to put it together for you guys. But it's really important to, to say that only one of those clips came from round two. The rest came from either last weekend or this week. So it's really important that we get these decisions right and we're consistent and we apply it on the, on the field moving forward. All right, so Mark, group one, we're going to go through. You want to go with, with, group, uh, with group five online? All right. So what was the group's decision? Can we just have to so for the first one, we put um, direct free kick red card. Okay. Um, reason red 18 made contact with studs to Green's ankle using excessive force. So as they've both came in, she's um, gone in, knees bent, and then straightened it as the contact was made. Um, the player's cue came from a distance, speed and no control with the actual ball um, and jumping, partially jumping off the ground as well. All right. Does anyone have, I guess here, I'll talk to the, to, the, to this room here. Does anyone, <laughs> Hamish was, uh, this was one of your clips, wasn't it? And I'll tell you, I'll, I'll be a decision. Sorry guys, you can't, you can't see Hamish. Um, he's just off screen here. <laughs> Would you like to come up? You can come up and, yeah. and speak. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. 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 Right. Hello. Uh, yeah. Look, on the day, I actually didn't really see the jump. If I'm being honest, I kind of I did see a straight leg, and even put in the report straight leg. But I thought the contact was lower on the foot, um, and seeing it today, just like I was. Position kind of well, I thought. I kind of didn't have to do anything with that, I hope. But yeah, I think looking back and thinking, the immediate, immediate time she touched the ball, I'm thinking, shit, was like <laughs> a bad touch, 50 50 challenge, both players coming in. But then I'm like, that's why I'm like there. But yeah, looking back, and I was stuck. But... <laughs> Okay. So what would you, I guess, Harry, so now that you're here, um, what would you do different? Yeah, I honestly, I even, I said it to Brad, like, sitting there, I was like, instead of just whipping it and just, like, smashing it, <laughs> you know, context, all right, kind of, it's all really big here, and we, okay, but instead of just, like, showing the yellow straight away, 
just like stay at the time and be like, be present, like walk over and make sure the first player that actually made it top challenge is okay. And then own that time, you can ask yourself, is that actually yellow? Is it like, is she actually fuck this up? I'm saying it to my head, so I may as well say it to you guys. But yeah, yeah. Apologies for anyone that's under 18 years ago. Moving on to the, to the next one. All right, we've started off well. All right, so group one, this is your second clip, and we're going with group one. the victim from group one that has to discuss. I'll probably send you turn around the bus. <laughs> Not that we can Hello. see. That. Hey. Um, all right. So it's a bit laggy on my computer, so I struggled to see um, the clip, but I'll go off what our group said. Um, yep. so our group decision was caution for reckless. Mm -hmm. Um, so if we go through considerations um, and um, physical cues, um, we said uh, medium speed and intensity, um, the player lunges in. Um, so we think um, mandatory caution and then point of contact by the looks is studs on boot, I think, looking at this. Um, and that was the conversation we had. So um, based on those considerations, we thought um, reckless for yellow card. Okay. All right. Who, oh, wait, I've already picked on, on that. Actually, no, because yeah, Liam was, was also supported the yellow card. <laughs> Does anyone have a difference of, a, of an opinion in regards to the yellow card? Did anyone go red card? Yeah. Um, so Lara, yeah. Uh, well, Lara, can you come up, please? <laughs> Not really, actually. No. So just where the little light is. Uh, I won't swear. <laughs> 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 I want to keep my teaching license. Um, so, uh, from my perspective, uh, the point of contact is the second leg up and has made additional movement, um, almost like a stabbing movement and made contact with the shin. Um, so when the player has come down, the first foot has, so he's lunged, he, his first foot has made contact with the boot, his second foot has done this, um, extra additional movement to make contact um, using excessive force um, to the player's shin. Okay. So we would go red card through to a play. Yep. So I guess sometimes that secondary moment is, is really hard to pick up, especially when you're on the field and you just see it at one speed. How do you think you could live, you think you could pick that up? I actually think that it's the angle, um, the way that you can see this secondary movement is to see the crosshair. So I don't know whether, uh, is it Martin? I'm not sure whether uh, the referee could actually see 
based on the angle because the angle that he has seen, it's really difficult to see the point of contact and the secondary movement. It's to come around and see the crosshair and that crosshair allows you to see that secondary movement. Do you think maybe your assistant referee might? Or yeah, throw him on the bus, I'd be like, Renee, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then I'll just go, nah, she told me. Yeah. <laughs> but again, like a lot of these clips, the referee, um, you know, uh, typical EPL style, where it's central channel um, and may not be getting over to get that angle of view. So it's really important that the assistant referee may be called on to give that additional information. So it's really important to form part of your pre-match instruction in regards to that. Like, I don't want to be, if I'm looking at you, I need your help um, to, to assist me in this area. Yeah, and anytime a challenge is going towards the touchline, the referee will most probably not have the best angle for that crosshair. So that's when we need to rely on additional help. And unfortunately, it always happens in front of the bench um, where the coaches have perfect angle and we have the worst angle. So, yeah. Would you agree with that, Chris? Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so number three, who are you gonna throw under the bus? Uh, group number two, you're up next. Ah, oh, yeah. Andy. Like Ellen, why is this going? There we go. No, I think we'll get group two thoughts and then we'll, then uh, Chris can add anything additional to it and then maybe Andy can follow with the rebut <laughs> in regards to it. <laughs> Since this is one of Chris's and my last discussions um, from a week ago. All right, so group two. Yeah, yeah I was thrown under the bus again on this one. <laughs> um, but to be thrown under the bus even more, we went, um, this clip wasn't uh, what we were given. Uh, as part of the group um, for the, th uh, for the, that was sent in the email as well. Um, but it shouldn't be group. sorry, Brad, it shouldn't be, um, uh, it's odds and even. So group two, actually, sorry, sorry, Brad, we'll, uh, we'll throw you under the bus a bit later on. No, uh, just do it now. Let him have it. Go on, Brad, step up. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Tony, did you want to discuss this one? <laughs> no, no, Brad, Brad Dow spokesperson. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, watching watching that video there, um, I'm definitely feeling uh, that's that's definitely a red card um, in that situation. The uh, the blue player um, has come in studs up from behind the uh, the attacking player there. I felt uh, he's just just left the ground too. He's not got any control coming from behind there too. Um, so I'd have to take that down as serious foul play. Yep. All right. Chris, would you like to stand up and uh, talk to... <laughs> so I guess uh, from a coach's perspective, you've seen this challenge come in. Yeah. Like what's going through your mind? Um, so I, I suppose when I had some time to have a look back at the game, um, we went up a goal early, which was for us was important because we know if against Capalaba, the longer you don't score, the harder it becomes. Uh, so this was, I think, five minutes after we just scored. Um, we obviously rely quite heavily on our transitional play. So um, when I look at this, this is a good moment for us to be able to get on the front foot and get a second goal quite quickly. Um, and the ball quite clearly came to, to our striker and it was, for me, um, a lunge in behind which the player left the ground, studs were showing from behind. Um, she possibly did come from the side, but I think one movement either way, and we could be talking between playing A-League this weekend and sitting out on the sideline. So that's where my frustration in the, in the decision came from. 
looking at it, but I, I didn't see any other um, solution to that. But as I spoke to you before, the beauty of football and the, the, the coincidence in football is this player scored the winner against strikers on the weekend. So um, it, it's not solely down to the decision, um, but it's it's football and the beauty of the game. But, um, but yeah, my decision and opinion of it doesn't change. Um, Andy, would you like to? <laughs> <laughs> I just killed Jacob. <laughs> oh, come and, and, and I guess talk through you know your on-field discussion because yeah. you're not you're not the only person or the only referees that have, you know the process that you applied um, will will be the change. So I guess um, you know a couple of the things in your self-analysis that really stuck with me is how you now are going to look at challenges moving forward. So do you just want to come up and I guess maybe talk through that? <laughs> We've got to give our people some uh, online online love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, <laughs> so uh, the light. Yeah, into the light. Uh, so I think like, we spoke about it um, after the event, and Chris kind kindly gave me his feedback. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I think it can, like when I was watching the incident unfold, the considerations I took into effect, um, I looked at the intensity and thought that was high. But for me at the time, when I looked at the point of contact, I thought it was clearly on the foot. I felt like the the angle he'd come from the side, um, and that was my initial thought anyway. Uh, so you know that come into effect as well. Um, so I felt point of contact from the foot, coming from the side, looked to me at times if both legs were, had a bend in the knee as well, rather than completely straight. And obviously the tackle was going away from the player, although it made contact rather than coming face on or something like that. So those were the considerations that took in and felt it was a screaming yellow, almost an orange. Um, I think looking at it again, what I didn't take into effect, and even now when I think about the picture that I have from back then, the picture didn't include the lunge. Um, so that was something that obviously when I look at now and see where we lunge from with the foot up, it looks a lot worse than it did in my head at the time, I think, because it didn't have that lunge picture. And when I look at the follow through after and how he come, kind of comes through and then takes the player's standing leg as well, Again, I looked at the actual point of contact rather than including the before and the after in it as well. And I think when you look at the before and the after, you can see how that challenge as a whole has the potential to endanger the safety of the player. Maybe if I'd have done, looked at it all in that regard, we may have come to a red instead of, or probably would have come to a red instead of a yellow. Um, so I think, my learnings out of that were that really I kind of gave equal weight in to all those kind of considerations that I was looking at and felt that you know because the contact was on the foot because it was I felt it was more from the side that overall I couldn't justify the red but maybe I should give more weight in to the overall safety of the player as well as then looking at some of those other considerations when I'm going to give the caution. Thanks. Thanks, Andy. I know that's not really like when you've done a decision like that, it's not easy getting up in front of your group of peers to discuss it. And I can assure you the higher the level you go up, the more you have to discuss it. Um, and it is quite confronting. So, so well done um, on sharing that with us. All right, last clip for, for group one, Mark, or shall we throw someone under the bus here? All right, who would like to discuss? Well, I've already put underneath the bus. Kiana, did you guys look at this one? All right, well, Joey, since she disappeared, <laughs> you can talk about this one. Um, I 
dark horse, pointed elbow, contact to the head, uh, serious foul play, red card. Oh, I've already gone back one. All right. Well, that was um, very robotic. Yeah. <laughs> Does anyone have a, a, a difference of a, an opinion in regards to that? I would like to debate um, Joey. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> on his lawful answer. Oops. Jackie, can you just play it again, please? <laughs> oh, okay. Tiny. How old I'm late, that's right. Quite nice. Okay. All right. So again, we, as you can see, there's our point of contact. So Joe, would you like to maybe speak a little bit slower for uh, for Tony? No, no. Just replay it again. Don't, don't. Joey doesn't need to speak. We heard Joey. Just need to see it again. In full, in fast motion. Just replay, it, Tony. Yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have anything to add, Tony? No, I was just impressed by his hang time. <laughs> <laughs> by his hang time? Hang time. Oh, hang time, so. Yeah. Uh, do, do, would anyone give this a yellow card online or in the room? I think, oh, sorry, is someone there, go. Yeah, I thought it was more of it. So I guess live. Live, I could, live, I could see myself giving this a yellow. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So live, I guess also the shape of the body is definitely difficult because the arm certainly doesn't come away from the body, which is really hard. So if we don't have that point of contact. Yes, Hamish. Easy is positioned pretty rigidly to see the point of contact. Spot on. Okay. Relying on the AR to actually have input is kind of something that the AR needs to do yep. rather than kind of wait for the like wait for the thing. So if the AR sees that point of contact is elbow, I've just said elbow, elbow, elbow. Yeah. elbow. But on, just on that point though, your AR is going to be way over here, like the AR closest to the camera. So if they're looking there, for me, that's what I'm concerned is that well out of their area, and the other they are on the other side is not going to see it. So, I mean, like it, the whole team is there. Yes, but you, like it's we need to not become over reliant on our our oh, AR yeah, to get out, out of out of the out of food. Like being being blunt, this is Izzy's mistake. So we need to like yes, our ARs can get us out of the, out of the poo. Oh. Yeah, um, but. <laughs> We need. We also need to make sure that the referees are held accountable to their decisions. So this is way out of out of the AR's area to be able to talk out effectively. So can I sorry something there? I, I don't disagree with that. Okay, in terms of the AR, however, in saying that from uh, Izzy's position, he's not going to see. He saw the. I would have said, and I haven't spoken to him, but he would have seen the jump. He wouldn't have seen that contact there from where he's positioned. Right, he wouldn't have seen the elbow to the head. He would have seen body contact at best. So the AR wouldn't have seen it. AR1 wouldn't have seen it. AR2 wouldn't have seen it. And Izzy at best would have seen just arm body contact with the other player. I agree. I think... Yeah, that's where, sorry, that's where I can sell a yellow card. That's for me. Yeah. I think... Jackie, just one thing. Um, so for me in this situation, so the first thing that made contact with red player is the body if mm -hmm. for me if the arm is away from the body it's try red but the the arm is you know he jumps and he keep his mm -hmm. elbow inside so if he put his elbow outside trying to impact the um red player for me different but yeah. in this situation what i saw was the body contact with his right leg mm -hmm. um yeah that's what I can say, what is on the day. Yeah, I guess it's really important the fact that although there's body contact here, we have contact with the arm to the face. 
So we have to see that. This is a blind spot because it's similar to a situation that we're going to see later with Brisbane Royal Youth that Chris also brought to my attention. Um, of that we're taking that central channel corridor and players are coming across and making that point of contact and where it's on our blind side. So, and our assistant referees are going to be in a position a lot of the time to help us out. So the onus is on the referee to try and get some sort of angle of view on it. Can I just ask a question then? Because there's a massive difference between arm contact and elbow contact. Yeah. And, and that's the difference between serious foul play and reckless. So again, that's the big decision point yeah. of uh, what most people should be taking into consideration. Yeah. If it's just arm contact, it's not serious foul play if you know, going through your other considerations. It just, because this has got elbow contact. Yeah, but yeah, but if it is a design as a weapon, though, yeah. it's it's still still just just it still just don't just it. From a coach and a player's point of view, in that, if I was the striker's player coming in and the ball being where it is, I'd expect being a defender that I'd be attacking the ball at its highest point, not for a defender to be on the ground. So as he's coming in, I'd be having my arm where he is expecting body contact. Now, if he's not jumping off the ground, we've got two different heights of where contact is now. If he was jumping, that shoulder to shoulder contact, but because he's been on the ground now, that shoulder to head contact, which I can understand how it's not going to be a red card for some because you've got his arms beside his body, but then for others, that's what we've been speaking about tonight. That's you know, arms to the head or shoulders to the head, elbows to the head, which it's a, it's a tough as a coach. I wouldn't be upset with that, yeah, because I don't have one see from both points of view. But when you endanger someone's safety, like we've been talking about, I can understand that. So if that was my play, I'd be like, tough oh, shit, yeah, okay. So I guess it's really important about that blind spot to referees. Can I just ask when um, a lot of the referees have their yellow cards out really quickly. So as an assistant, half the time you haven't had a chance to get your say across. So are you wanting us to then say, oh, have we considered red or oh, to change their mind as an assistant? Or do we just go, they've seen it, they've given the yellow, so we just go with that? Because most referees have Seem to be quite quick before we get a chance to have the communication. If we just look, I'm just going to play and I'll hopefully play. Oops. So where, where we see, we've got a player on the ground. Something's happened, player's on the ground, and we have time. We have time, like um, Hamish said um, previously, minus the um, the language, <laughs> uh, is that you've got time. Assess the player. He could be split open or anything like that. There's just been contact with the head. Get treatment on and think. If you've got comms, get that input from the assistant referee. I'm going yellow. I see reckless contact. Um, being, no elbows being used. Or elbow, 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 red card, red card, red card. All right? And then you've got that time. Uh, you get in the player says, get the other player, the offender, away from the situation. I'm going to deal with you in a minute. Okay. It's really important to utilise, if the game is stopped, you've got time on your hand to reach the correct decision and get that input or get that buy-in from your team. And make sure you remember who it was. Yeah, like I said, well, if you separate them, number four over there, I will deal with you in a second. And then it's clear, I don't have to take... I don't have to get my mate to sort him out because the referee's got it. Yeah. So it's really important. And then I've said number four, if number four disappears or wanders off, and my team, if I've got comms, have heard it. Or if I've got a loud voice, hopefully my assistant referee hears, hears me anyway. Did I get one question? No, yes. Oh. Just a question to Chris. If would your player make uh, this challenge to your reaction? To be honest, that decision, that, that leaves it up to interpretation of referees. So if my player is going to do that, then obviously I'll be upset. Everyone that knows me knows that I'll be upset if you send my player on. And even the yellow card is your best mate, but at the end of the day, that our player puts themselves in that position. Do I think it's avoidable? Yes. But I understand how you can get a red card out of that decision. So I'm not 
I understand that, by the way. He'll probably I'll be upset. Yeah, I'll probably <laughs> get it Monday morning, but yeah, you know, he might put in. Oh, your referee, your referee was right this time. <laughs> but no, it's pretty good. He he is quite positive in his reports. I'm trying to think past. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. We'll try and power through quickly. Sorry, guys, we've gone a bit over time, but I think it's really important that we we continue on with this trend. All right. Uh, group two, click one. Uh, we'll just cycle through here and then if people are online, um, we'll go with uh, this group over here. You were, were even. Uh, you might as well talk while it's going on. I think this one's yeah. really clear. So we said um, direct free kick red card. Uh, the white player number 11 um, has jumped and has struck the opponent with his forearm slash elbow. And he's also um, twisted his body in the movement, which has increased his momentum. So it um, gives you successive force. And and using his elbow as a weapon. Yeah, yeah so we said. White eleven jumps and strikes an opponent with his forearm slash elbow with brutality and excessive force using his elbow as a weapon. Yeah. So what? So we deemed it to be serious foul play or violent conduct. Violent conduct. Well, yeah, I agree. For me, it's violent conduct because the ball's already gone when contact is made. All right. Click number two. situation previously we're coming from a central we're coming from a central channel here so point of contact or what seeing what the point of contact is anyone who always difficult for the referee and causes the most trouble because as Lara said it's in front of the benches so this is especially at WE this is where we're really asking for our fourth officials and AR ones to help us here if we miss this sort of stuff uh, but it's really important to get an angle to see, especially here with there's something happened and then the players coming, the second players coming. So that should be alarm bells to say, I need to get an angle on them. Yeah, yeah, agree. Does anyone have any comment? Chris, do you have anything to add to that? No. All right. As you can talk, can you talk about this one? <laughs> yeah, look. Lunge, straight leg, yeah. contact the ball with the ankle. Um, I think he, the referee deems that he's missed him. Yeah, no, there is contact with the sideline down onto his head. It's glancing contact. Um, so direct free kick, straight card, serious mm -hmm. foul play. Yeah. So glancing contact, as we said, any contact, whether it's glancing or not. Yeah. See you later, alligator. All right. Thank you. Can I just ask then? So you're saying in that situation, if he hadn't got any contact because the player just completely jumped and avoided it, it would only be yellow. Sorry, Carrie. Can, can you just? Whoops. It's getting a little bit excited. Sorry, Carrie. Can you um, speak again? So you're just saying. So that one way is that even if it's glancing. So if there was absolutely no contact, but the player just completely jumps out of the road to avoid it, um, mm -hmm. you're saying that in that instance it would just be yellow because of the lack of contact but if even if it's serious foul play if it's just glancing there'd be straight red so if there yeah, had been no contact at all you're saying just no yellow. contact at all it has to be a yellow card minimum yeah and we restart with an indirect free kick or challenges or we got uh, tackles or attempts to tackle uh could also be a direct free kick it just depends on your interpretation on the on the day but you can definitely restart with a direct free kick if you deem it to be a, is it challenges and attempts to challenge yeah. attempts to jump, attempts um, to jump. Yeah. and then if, if the to jump, it comes out of the yeah 
So, uh, in, and with the yellow card, the thing is, is that we haven't been sanctioning, we're just giving, being, giving public warnings for that. All right, we'll just restart with this one. This is the last one. Zach online, Mark. Yeah. All right, Zach, you want to talk us through this one? Yeah, sure. So I had two pictures to take. Um, it's also in the dogzo consideration, but I'll talk purely about severity. Um, I should start maybe with how I'm going to look to gauge tackles in the future um, in that the lunge will be higher in the consideration list than perhaps what point of contact or intensity is. Um, on the day, um, my decision was a caution. Um, and the reason I did that was point of contact was made by Mitch Nichols' knee. Um, while there's big alarm bells with the lunge, um, my focus was what actually got him. Um, and even though it was with a bent leg that actually got him and then the knee on knee contact, my emphasis is gonna to change to um, really have a focus on that initial lunge and the approach, um, even though it was from a shorter distance, the speed being as high as it was, and then the added intensity by that lunge um, means that it should have been serious foul play instead of the, the caution that I gave on the day. Great. All right, again, like Andy, you're not alone in regards to not identifying or taking that whole picture. Again, Zach yeah. only saw that point of contact. And I think that's from listening to this. For me, it's not a picture, it's a two second clip yeah. Of, yeah. of the incident. It's what you want to take, not just the picture of the actual contact, because that's what gives you like the overall view of how we come in, how we finish the tackle, as well yeah. as just the actual image. Yeah. And then yeah. try to take that two second, three second clip rather than just the actual picture of the contact. Yeah. So it's really important when you see a player coming at speed, coming in medium or coming from distance, how they do it. Oh, he's coming at speed, alarm bells are going in, I'm gonna adjust my position because I think point of contact's going to be there. You should be analyzing that and you should be moving and constantly talking to yourself in regards to that. Then you're putting yourself in that position. All right, he's off the ground, he makes contact, that's a red card. No one's gonna money that picture because I've taken everything in, I've spoke to myself, I'm anal constantly analysing the game as I'm watching it and adjusting my position because I I want to see what that aim, well, that, that contact is. So I'm not thinking, oh, position, position, I've got to go left, I've got to do this. I'm just like, I need to see the point of contact and you'll automatically move um, to it instead of being robotic by going left. Oh, I've always been told to go left, so I'll go left. Why? The game's not telling you to go left, it's telling you to go right. Talk to yourself constantly. Analyze the game. Analyze what the players are doing. Mitch Nichols, problem player. <laughs> I've got to have a third eye on him at all times. If I don't have an eye on him, someone else needs to have an eye on him. You've always got a problem player like that yeah. that are going to cause you problems if you aren't on them constantly for the whole 90 plus minutes. So having that awareness, and you, you can't judge them on previous games. Got to take the picture of what the game. The game tells you so much, and the players tell you so much. You've got to understand it. It's your role as a referee to understand football and what's going to cause you problems, and be proactive, be preventative, and protect the player's safety. All right. So again, like we we've spoken about, not all serious foul play is going to be that high intensity speed short distance, um, it could cause you problems because you don't have that quick time to adjust, but an, an angle or moving a slight bit, it's gonna change your cue. Keep moving, don't be stationary, don't be reactive. Then, and get out of the central channel. Get out of the way. <laughs> it is. So again, move, constantly keep on moving and identify the fact that if we don't identify serious foul play, Someone's going to get hurt. Yeah. And that onus, we've got to take responsibility for that as well. 
because we may have allowed this to happen because we haven't been strict enough. Again, point of contact isn't actually in the laws of the game, but it's what undoes us. It's a consideration. Like I said, like you said, we've got to take a picture. The whole information of everything, like dog soap, we start out analysing that early so we make the right picture at the right time. It's the same with identifying serious foul play. And just because they jump out of the way, we must always punish the challenge. We don't manage. Football does not expect us to manage these situations. They expect us to protect the players. Oh, the game didn't deserve the yellow card. Oh, the game didn't need a red card. Well, it did. I'm going to tell you it did. Yeah. So don't let yourself down, don't let the players down, and don't let your peers down. So what does that look like? So this happened, I'm not too sure if you guys have seen this. Already, this team's already popped a red card. 62 minutes, it's nil-nil. <clears throat> I hate poo settings. job is not to be liked. It is to do the right thing by the game. It's our duty. Okay, overall, we must protect player safety. And again, it's competitive sport. I'm not saying, oh, you know, it can't be competitive. You can have a, have a hard, fast-paced game, but again, it's got to be in a safe environment. And then we've got to identify does it go beyond reckless? Don't look for reasons to downgrade it. Okay. Again, these challenges will in, uh, could end someone's career. Like I said, I don't want excuses to why we downgrade them. And failure to act will not change a player's behaviour. Again, it's our mission individually as well as a group it's our collective responsibility to protect players' safety, to set the precedent of what is fair, safe, and enjoyable environment for all. Thank you for bearing with me for so long. Apologies for those on Zoom. Obviously, we're still experimenting. It's our first time having a live session, plus being online. I'm happy to take your feedback so we can improve the experience for you guys uh, next time. Um, but is, does anyone have any questions in regards to challenges that endanger the safety of an opponent? Or if you do, you can, you're most welcome to email Mark or myself or Bale is up at training tomorrow by myself. No? Anyone here? Congrats, sir. Oh, yeah. Congrats, sir. Congrats, Ian. <laughs> Yes, well done, guys. Um, we won't go through the general questions. Um, like I said, there was one about goalkeeper encroachment, refer to the laws of the game. And there was one about penalty kick management that's also in the laws of the game. So I'll touch base with those guys that had those queries um, and email you directly in some responses.